Okay, these are the solutions to the Unit 4 test in WebAssign, and uh, we're going to show this to you right in uh, WebAssign, uh, see if we can help some people out with some difficulties they've been having. Uh, this first exercise here, you've got uh, an inequality, and what we recommend on this, um, although if you're, if you're doing fine with them, then don't change anything, but what we recommend is changing the inequality to equality, and that 7 minus 5x equals negative 18. And then just solve it as if it's a regular equation. You're going to use the property of the additive inverse and get negative 25. And uh, then we're going to divide both sides by negative 5 using the property of the multiplicative inverse. And so we're going to get x equals 5. Then what we do is, and we do this to mock something that you have to do in the calculus, is we put any solutions we find to the equality problem on a number line, right? So we've got this x equals 5 that we discovered through equality. And then we're just going to, uh, first of all, remember, since it's pure inequality, purely greater than, this circle is going to be an open circle, right? Uh, then all we do is we test a number uh, in all the associated intervals. So for instance, we're going to test x equals 6, and we're going to test it in the original inequality. So that's 7 minus 5x, and you're questioning, is that greater than negative 18? And so that's uh, 7 times 5 uh, times 6. Is that greater than negative 18? So we get 7 minus 30, and is that greater than negative 18? And of course, that's negative 23. And is negative 23 bigger than negative 18? And that would be a no. So numbers in that interval are not going to work. We know all numbers bigger than 5 won't work. And then if we try a number less than uh, less than 5, say 0, and again, you plug it into the given inequality. You go back and you check in the given inequality, which was negative, uh, which was 7 times minus 5x is greater than negative 18. And so in this case, pretty obviously, you get 7 is greater than negative 18. And that's what you're questioning. You're asking yourself, is that true or false? And of course, 7 is a bigger number than negative 18. That's a yes. So these numbers over here, to the left of 5, they would get shaded. And that's what you would have done in high school, right? And you could list this solution as negative infinity to 5 exclusive of the 5. The 5 is not included as part of the answer. Now, in WebAssign, what you do is you go over to the number line, the virtual tools. If you can't see the virtual tools, then it's because you don't have the right browser, typically. Uh, you'll notice here I'm using Google Chrome to do this. And the newest version of Google Chrome seems to work fine with these virtual tools. Now, I identify the numbers which I uh, found through equality, which in this case was a 5. So I pick up the virtual tools, and I'm going to grab a, uh, a 5. And so from here, I'm going to pick this tool, this open circle right here. And then I'm going to locate 5 on the number line. And I put it there. And then i got to tell it I want it to be an open circle, right? Now, notice I could also have used the right parenthesis if I wanted to. If you prefer to use the parenthesis symbol like you use in the um, like you use in the interval solution, um, you can do that if you like. And then once you're happy with that, then you go and grab the draw tool here. So you just click on the draw tool, and then if I click on this side, it will shade that side. If I click to the left of five, it will shade that side. And if I click over here on the right hand side, it will shade that side. So you just click in there and it shades it, and then you uh, select that answer. That's your, that's your answer for that question, and, and you're finished. Um, now, in question number two, we have a radical. We have a square root. 2x plus 5 is equal to negative 3. Now, how do you solve? If you want to solve this, then uh, to remove the square root, we would square both sides, which means we're multiplying negative 3 times itself. 
And so we get 2x plus 5 equals 9, because negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Then additive inverse, remove the 5, and we get 2x equals 4. We divide by 2, and we get x equals 2. Still fine and good, right? Well, with radicals, you have to be very, very careful. Because if you try to check, right, if we do a little check over here of x equal to 2, you will find that that answer does not work. Because you get 4 plus 5. And, of course, that is 9. And we're doing a square root of 9. Well, the principal square root of 9 is the number 3 equals negative 3. Does 3 equal negative 3? No, that's incorrect. So that number, x equals 2, is not the solution. And in fact, there's no answers to this question. And if you look at the structure and think about it for a minute, the square root does not have a minus sign in front of it. So this is a principal square root. This is a positive square root. There's no way that can be negative. And so um, we can tell, in fact, right from the outset that there are not going to be any solutions to this equation. Now, with that in mind, in WebAssign, you click in the answer space. That will bring up the math pad. Okay, And then under Relations, you can select the option for no solution, okay? So uh, that's how you'd handle that situation, all right? Um, now, as we move ahead, and I guess i got to move up a little bit here to do this, and then i got to get rid of some things. So let me grab an eraser. Let me grab an eraser here and um, get rid of this stuff that was there. And uh, look at this question number three. So question three, back to an inequality. And as previously mentioned, we really feel, if you're having trouble with this, that the best way to look at inequality is to think of them as pure equalities. And so I changed the inequality sign to an equality and I'm also carrying out the distributive property. All right? So I get 5x minus 15. Okay? Now, when you solve this, you're going to get a 2x equals 34. Because when you add the 15 here, right? Add the 15. You get 34. Subtract the 3x. You get 2x. Gives me an x equals 17. Fine and good. You put that 17 on a number line. Now this time, because this inequality allows equality, right? It's greater than or equal to. So since it's or equal to, and since the 17 would be allowed, we would shade in that 17. We'd use the closed in circle. We'd use the closed in bubble, right? That answer works in that given inequality, okay? And then from there, we just test an answer, a, a number on each side of the 17. So down here, I'm going to use my favorite number, 0. So I'm going to replace the x by a 0. And I'm going to question, is uh, the statement true? Well, of course, the left-hand side pretty plainly becomes just a 19, okay? And the right-hand side becomes a 15, right? Because 5 times 3 is 15. Now, is 19, right? That's the question you're asking. Is 19 greater than or equal to 15? And that's a yes. So those numbers work. Those numbers all work. Right? And I found that out by just testing a number in the interval. So we've got those working. Whereas if you tried a number over here, like say a 20, right? 
we would have had. Let me just get rid of. Let me just get rid of some stuff here. Um, let me just get rid of this stuff over here and grab my pen back. Um, and if we try a number in the region above 17, remember this was 17 right here. And if we try 20, right, we get 60 plus 19 is greater than or equal to 5 times 20 minus 3, which is 5 times 17. And if you do that, you notice you get 85. All right. And on the left hand side, we've got 60 plus 19. So we got 79. So the question is, is 79 greater than 85? That's what you're asking. And of course, the answer is no. So those numbers don't work. You then go over to your um, web assign virtual number line. You locate the number 17. Now, you've got to look at this scale a little bit, okay? If that's 15 and that's 20, then this midpoint here is actually 17 and a half, right? So we want to be a little bit to the uh, left of that. So notice where I put that. I didn't put it right on that. I can move it if I need to, right? Um, and then I want that to be an open circle or a closed circle. Right now it's a closed circle, right? Well, we have the equality, so I want it to be a closed circle. I want it to be just as it stands. Then I go, I grab the draw tool, and I want to shade all numbers less than 17. So I just go over in this area anywhere I want and click, and that submits your answer like that. All right? So uh, that's, that's the story with those virtual tools. Um, now, if we go to number four, if I slide up the page a little bit here and show you four and five, and then get my eraser again and get some of this stuff out of the way. Right? Um, this time, we're working with a quadratic inequality. So as far as I'm concerned, no difference. I'm going to use x squared minus 11x minus 80 equals 0. All right? So I'd get rid of the inequality for a minute. If you're having trouble with these, this method might work for you. Now, this thing factors pretty easily. If you're having trouble with factoring, then that's a different issue. Get back to us. Let us know. We can probably draw something up to help you out with factoring. 80, 1 and 80, 2 and 40, 4 and 20, 8 and 10, 16 and 5. And notice the signs are going to be different. It's going to be a plus factor and a minus factor. Okay, in our product there. And fairly apparent, we want a minus 16 and we want a plus 5. All right? Then x plus 5 equals 0. Or x minus 16 equals 0. So out of the quadratic equation, we're going to get two answers 16. And minus 5. From here, we take those two answers, we load them to a number line in numerical order. So minus 5 is going to be the left of 16. And now finally, we test a number in each of the three intervals produced. Now, right here in the middle is a real easy x equals 0. And in the original inequality now, when you replace the x by a 0, you are plainly going to get a number, negative 80. And that is less than or equal to 0. Okay, So that's a true. That's yes. Those numbers in that region from negative 5 to 16 will all work just by testing known 
zeros of the equation, just by testing the roots of the equation, numbers in between those roots, you can tell what every number in between does. Now also, because we have equality here, we would shade in those both. Right? Those numbers themselves are going to work because equality is allowed. Right? So that goes like that. Now, if you try a number bigger than 16, it's not going to work. You try 20. 20 squared minus 11 times 20 minus 80. Is that less than or equal to zero? Well, 20 squared is 400. Okay. And the minus 11 times 20 is 20 minus another 80. Is that bigger than zero? Is 400 minus 220, well, that's 180, minus another 80, that's 100. Is that greater than zero? That's a no. That's a false condition. Numbers down there won't work, all right? And then if you try a number down here, like, say, a minus 10, you've got minus 10 squared, uh, minus 11 times minus 10, okay, minus 80. Is that uh, less than or equal to zero. Well, negative 10 squared is 100 plus 110, and then you're only going to take away 80. So is that going to end up less than zero? Well, in fact, no, it won't. Okay, you'll end up, I think, with 130. Okay, is 130 less than or equal to zero? That's a false condition. That will not work. So numbers down there don't work. You go to your virtual tools. And this time I'm locating minus 5, okay? So minus 5 is right there, right? And it is included, so I want the dark circle. And I want to go up to 16. So 16 is right here. And you click on the 16. And then you grab the draw tool, and you shade the region in between them. Whoops. Shade the region in between them. And... You submit that as your answer, and you'll be fine. Okay? So inequalities, if you're having trouble, we recommend you go to equality and then test intervals. Now, there are other ways to do these. There's no doubt about that. And if you have a method that works for you, then keep doing that. You'll be fine. Okay? Um, now, just grab the eraser. Put one more uh, in, this, uh, in this set. And so we'll get rid of this stuff. And we'll look at this thing that came from a former unit on rational expressions. We've got uh, right here, right? We've got 1 over x plus 1 over 9 equals 4 over 9x. So as you look at this, you have fractions that you're adding. So the idea would be get a common denominator, all right? Get a common denominator. And the common denominator between x and 9 would be 9x. To obtain that on the left here, you multiply top and bottom by 9, so you're multiplying by 1, and 9 times 1 is going to give you a 9. On the right side of this expression here, you're going to multiply top and bottom by x, so that's going to give you a 1x, so... When we, uh, when we add those, we get 9 plus x, if you want to write it that way. And, of course, on the right-hand side of the equation, you already have a uh, denominator of 9x. Since those denominators are equal, and since the fractions as wholes are equal, I know that 9 plus x has to equal 4. And if you bring the 9 to the other side, by subtracting it, you get x equals minus 5. So then you go to the web assigned answer block, and you would want to put in a minus 5. All right? All there is to it. No problem with that. All right? Um, so there's questions uh, 1 through 5. And... Uh, We'll, in a few minutes, have uh, the others ready for you. Take a look at them. Let us know if you need any help.